Good afternoon. My name is Susan Davis and I'm your lecturer today. Today's Mass is being offered for Francis Bob Borelli. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Matt. Today we have the following announcements. St. Vitus School presents its 14th annual Night of the Races fundraiser on Friday, May 17th at Mary Mother of Hope Parish Center. Doors open at 6 p.m. Races begin at 7 p.m. Complimentary food and beverages, BYOB, free mixers and beer, gift basket raffle, games, and fun. Sponsor sheets available online, at the school, and in the St. Vitus Rectory office. Don't delay. Pre-sale orders must be turned in by May 6th. Attention all parishioners. As announced last weekend, this summer, August 7th through 10th, we will have our new parish festival, and we are in need of volunteers. There will be a dinner meeting this Wednesday, May 8th, at 6 p.m. at St. Vitus in Fabry Hall to meet our new festival cook. It is not too late to sign up for the dinner. To make your reservation, we ask that you call any of the parish offices by noon on Monday. In addition, if you do not have your state, state required clearances for volunteering, there will be an opportunity on Wednesday evening to begin that process. There is no charge for the dinner or the processing of the clearances. We hope to see you on Wednesday. Please note that our next Christ Life series, Following Christ, begins on Tuesday, April 30th, and runs through June 11th at St. James. If you have not done so already, you can still register by calling Mimi Denji at St. James. The phone number is in the bulletin. The St. Camille's Ladies Guild is sponsoring a motor, bo motor coach trip to the Meadows Casino on Monday, May 20th, 2018. Price for the trip is $30 with a $25 for bonus free play. Look for information in the bulletin, Mother's Day Weekend. We ask at this time that you silence your electronic devices. Please be sure to take the bulletin to keep up with the events happening in our parish. Let us now stand to greet Christ with one, one another and join in our opening hymn on page 332, Crown Him with Many Thorns.
mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your three days in the tomb, you opened for us the gates of paradise. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us? But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. 
The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left in the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Our response to the psalm is on page 20 of your misalectic.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called. On, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of the fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. <coughs> Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, First Holy Communion, 
and we just had a Mass this morning at St. Vitus, and another Mass last week at St. Joe. So all together, we'll have 84 little ones receiving First Holy Communion. And it's interesting in our relationship with Christ that it just doesn't end there. Now, how many of us, our First Communion was many, many years ago? But has our understanding and our relationship with God changed over the years? Has it grown and developed? the Lord. Now, notice, John's Gospel says this is the third time Jesus has appeared. So he's already appeared to the disciples twice. And yet, what are they doing? They've gone back to fishing. He said, I'll make you fishers of men. And they're back in a boat. They weren't really convinced of the resurrection. Or they didn't understand what they were supposed to be doing. It takes time in our relationship with Christ to come to know and to respond. So they fish all night. Again, they're in the dark. They don't understand. And of course, they prove not to be that good a fisherman anyway. They catch nothing. Where is Jesus? He is in the dawn of the light. He's on the shore. And it's John who recognizes that it's Jesus. Why? Because he's the beloved disciple. He is sensitive to that love relationship that he has with Christ. And he recognizes his presence. Peter, now notice something. The liturgists sometimes sanitize the scripture, unfortunately, because they say he was lightly clad. The original Greek says he was naked. It says he was naked for a reason. It really irritates me when liturgists do that, because they shouldn't do that. He was naked. Who was naked? Adam and Eve. They recognized their sinfulness. They didn't want to see God. So what do they do in their nakedness? They throw something on. They hide. Peter is naked before God. He hasn't yet been reconciled with Christ for denying him. So he throws something on and he jumps in the water. He wants to hide. They pull this load of fish ashore. They counted them that day, oddly enough. Why? Because that number in the ancient world was believed to be the same number of the species of fish in the sea. Which would mean that Christ came to draw all people to himself. The net is ready to break, but it doesn't break. God's church is big enough to hold everyone. We would say it's crowded. God says, bring more. There's a charcoal fire. When was the last time Peter was around a charcoal fire? When he was warming himself on the night of Christ's trial. It was around that charcoal fire that he denied the Lord three times. Peter does not want to be around that charcoal fire. And after they eat breakfast, which is break fast. Remember earlier in the scripture? 
when Jesus' disciples were criticized for not fasting and he said, oh, the day will come when they will fast. They caught no fish. They were fasting. They were hungry. They were doing without. The fast has been broken because Christ is here now and he feeds them. Like he fed the crowds with bread and fish, symbolizing his very life in the Eucharist. Then he turns to Peter, it's time for reconciliation. Now, in the original Greek, there are three words for love. Eros, philii, and agape. Eros is the love of lovers. It's the passion. It's erotic. Philii, we know because of Philadelphia, brotherly love. It is the love of good friendship. It is the love of neighbor. And then there's agape. Agape is divine love. It's the love that's willing to die for another. So if you read this in the original Greek, Jesus says, Peter, do you love me agape? Do you love me with divine love, self-sacrificial love? Now Peter said, he would die for Christ at the Last Supper. But he knows he wasn't able to do that. He denied the Lord. So he responds, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Philei, as a friend, a brother. But I'm incapable of dying for you. He says, do you love me more than the others? But that doesn't mean do you love me more than them in the sense of comparison. That means do you love me more than you love their approval? Because we do things for people's approval. Do we worry more about God's approval? So he asked him again, Simon, son of John, and that's speaking to his weakness, to his human nature. Do you love me agape? Peter's not going out on any more limbs. You know that I love you, filii. Then finally, Jesus asked him, do you love me, filii? And the scripture says Peter was hurt. Now some say he was hurt because he asked three times. Maybe he was hurt because Jesus settled for a weaker love. But he responds, Lord, you know everything. Who knows everything? Only God. You know that I love you. Philly eye. But in every instance, Jesus gives him a task to fulfill. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. These children who are going to receive First Holy Communion, parents and godparents, your work isn't over. It's just beginning. We have a challenge to nurture our own faith and the faith of our loved ones. We have a job to do. And then, Jesus tells him, Peter, by my grace, you will love me, agape, with divine love, because you will give your life as witness and love to me. And that's why he ends, telling him how he will die. And then the Lord says, what he says to all of us, follow me. Who do we follow? Who are we following every day? In our priorities, 
in the choices that we make. So Jesus says to Peter what he says to you. Follow me. Don't waste your life following anyone else. On the day of our baptism, our godparents, parents, or we ourselves as adults renewed our promises to God and our rejection of the devil. So on this third Sunday of Easter, I invite you to do the same. Please stand. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, rose from the dead, and is seen at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And in this faith, we dare to place before the Lord all of our cares and concerns. bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Holy Spirit purify and sanctify them as they lead us in the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Or inside that cover of your hymnal. Lord Jesus, you told us to in our hearts also. Perish in the Lord's time, treasure our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice the love to fill in your name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom. Give success to the work of our hands.
yourselves in these gifts we offer be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you give her cause for such great gladness, grant also that these gifts may bring her the fruit of perpetual happiness with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, but especially during this sacred time when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he has restored our life. And so with all the people throughout the entire world, including the powers of heaven, Oh, 
they may grow even now in the flesh.